Okay, so this is the third one in uh, GDevelop series of learning GDevelop and trying new techniques and things that I haven't done before. So I did a little bit of research. I couldn't quite figure out what I was looking for. So I just kind of plowed ahead with the rest of the game mechanics. Uh, where I left off, I was kind of stuck with the rotation not working properly and uh, I, I couldn't figure out how to make it how to make it work and separate so I know there's a way to it and I'll probably revisit it later in my journey but uh, for now I decided I'll just plug plug ahead with the game and uh, keep going so right now I just switched over to the screen capture and what I'm going to do is just preview this and just show you uh, where I got to and kind of where I'm stopping. So I just kind of replicated everything I was doing with the red bricks and uh, set different timers to them. So I can move them and I can rotate them, but I'm stuck on the rotating. They stop when they hit the border at the bottom. There's another red one coming. See how it still rotates? I just haven't been able to get rid of that. Now this one, rotate that around. There's another red one. When they land on each other, they stop. And two at a time coming down here, which I just have my timing off a little bit there. But since I'm in a, kind of in a hurry to move on, I didn't want to uh, See how they hang up on each other. I've got that working really good. I'm going to try and demonstrate the uh, purple ones. Here we go. Bang. See how that landed on it? It was on an edge. Can I make that fall a bit more? Sure. Can I touch the red? Nope, not quite. You know, those two fell into each other after I had rotated. Got rid of the reds and then the greens hit each other. I'm just, no, I can't do it there, but let's do it here. Oh, nope. Slide that one off. There we go. Anyway, you get the idea. And when the bricks hit the top, if they all stack up and hit the top, there you go. See how the uh, purple is overlapping because of the collision zones. See how the red drops in there? So that is something that I also want to show you. Um, Come on. No. Not gonna make it. Anyway, we're gonna escape out of there. So eventually when that hit the top, we would um, we would game over when those hit the top. So it's not perfect. It, it's really only halfway there. But until I can fix that rotate option, I can't fine tune the other stuff. Even by adding a grid, um, I don't know that I would be able to, to fix that until I find the appropriate method. So this will be the final episode in the um, Tetris one, and next I'll move on to probably like a, a drag and drop matching, or maybe then after that a farm simulator or something. Drag and drop matching should be pretty simple. It'll probably be one episode tomorrow. Um, but I wanted to show you the advanced collision detection. So if I go into this purple object, and if I go into edit collision masks, I have two collision masks set up. There's one. And there's the other and so that means that this area won't be in the collision just these will and so that's how you can set up more complicated masking for um, more advanced shaped objects so I just wanted to, to uh, quickly show you that but pretty much that's all I wanted to show you today so a little bit of a lame episode I did not accomplish my goal however I did learn a lot about um, 
setting up a bunch of different things and I want to move on. So we learned how to set up a spawner, multiple spawners. We learned how to rotate objects. We learned how to set uh, basic physics into objects and make them move and set up boundaries. So well, some of those things I already know how to do. Some of them I kind of know how to do but hadn't actually implemented. So now we've done them. So on that note, we are going to be moving on to the next one. Have a good night.